Max After Dark, a retrospective. Erotic Confessions. Hotline. Nightcap. The Pleasure Zone. Passion Cove. Thrills. The Best Sex Ever. Hotel Erotica. Black Tie Nights slash Hollywood Sexcapades. Sex Games Vegas. And yes, Sex Games Cancun. Hotel Erotica Cabo. The Erotic Traveler. Sin City Diaries. My personal favorite. Coed Confidential. Zane's Sex Chronicles. Forbidden Science. Lingerie. Life on Top. Femme Fatales. Skin to the Max. Chemistry. The Girl's Guide to Depravity. Working Girls in Bed. And The Topless Prophet. Now, what do all of these have in common? It's Tasteful Belly Button Grinding! This week on oh, Nothing Good! So, uh, first and foremost, gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Nothing Good. Yes. Episode 75. Jesus uh, Christ. Might have been better for 69. We've been, uh, we've been doing oh. this for a hot minute. Uh, it's not, not a cold minute. No. Yeah. It's it's funny. I was, I was talking to somebody, I think it was on one of my softball teams, and we were talking about the podcast, and somebody came up and, and said, I listened to the Waterworld episode, and I almost pissed myself about the introduction. I'm like... There's a lot going on there. Yeah, involving, <laughs> clearly. Involving that movie, involving Piss, and involving that intro. And um, he's like, um, I found that episode. How many episodes have you guys done? And I said, I think we're like getting around 75. And he's like, holy shit. Like, you guys are doing it. Yeah, there's uh, a lot and, of content there. And I'm like, we are. In a moment, Dave realized he was, in fact, doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. Holy shit. I just, I just read a list of, like, 17 shows that were doing it. Um, so before we go... See what you did there. Oh, yeah, like well that. Played. Thank you. Full so circle. Before we get too far away from your intro, can I tell you, and this is a shout-out to one of our semi-regular listeners, my sister-in-law, uh, on occasion will listen to the show. It's typically background noise for her, but she will listen. Uh, and she want she didn't want me to tell you, but she told me recently. I was I was kicking it with her, and she said, uh, "There's uh, that guy who does the intros." I was like, "Well, there's a couple of them." She goes, "Well, they both are really good, but the one recently." And I was like, "What what show are you talking about?" There was like the the E C W. I'm like, "You would listen to that?" <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I don't know if my sister has watched a day of, a night or an evening or an hour of wrestling in her life. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, she had it on while she was cleaning. <laughs> And she said the intro, she goes, "Who the guy who was doing the intro did a fucking fantastic job. Wow. And I said, I will tell him you said that. So Noah did that intro. I was going to say Noah did that intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was the... <laughs> Dave started it, and then he had that to redo was, it. That was the start, and I kind of like flubbed it intentionally at the end, so we brought in Noah to kind of mm. finish it. So what I meant to say, Noah, you do a great job. Yeah. Noah. <laughs> uh, speaking of Noah, uh, at the end of the last show, he fucking promised... He would be here. And here we are. <laughs> Three men once again. Here we are. Me reading off a list of Skinamax television titles. You know what you fucking did, Noah. Motherfucker. He'll be back at some point. Yeah, he'll be Sometime back Sometime in eventually. four or five months. I, I want to throw this out there to our listeners. All right, We should probably put like a Twitter poll on here or something. I just want to get an idea from our from our audience. How many of these shows have you seen? You know, just, you know, you don't have to, like, list who you are or anything. Just, you know, click the titles or something. Like, we'll put a we'll put a poll out there or something. Because I'm kind of curious if, like, you know, I see these things online where people's like, oh, the classic 50 horror movies. And how many have you seen? And I'm like, mm. oh, I've seen, like, 24 of them. You know, I'm kind of hoping, like, the Midnight Listener comes up here and he's 18 for 19 on this shit. I can almost guarantee he probably is. I hope so. And you know what's really sad? Kids in today's day and age will never know. 
the joy of belly button grinding on Cinemax. They're just not going to. It's a whole vibe. Because man. the internet has just changed the game. Do you remember that there is a pay, there is a, a paid premium channel owned by Home Box Office and Warner Brothers that come, come, hello, <laughs> hello, that come uh, 11 o'clock for the next two hours was nothing but softcore pornography. It's true. And now it's gone. Now it's just like, but it's on demand. It's the Matrix Resurrections. I don't even think it's on demand much anymore. I mean, I haven't really looked. I've kind of graduated. I mean, but... are, we're about to find out here, Mac. You tell us. <laughs> um, no, like I, I, you know, there was a time where you know that was what you, that was your block from like eleven to one or eleven to two. You had, you know, the lingerie and Forbidden Science and you know Hotel Erotica Ca- Cancun and Cabo and everything else and. You know, now it's just, like I said, it's, it's the Matrix Resurrections, and I don't know what's worse. <laughs> that's, that's a fair argument. We were going to do an entire episode about the Matrix, and that movie was so fucking bad, we had to pivot to a much better movie. It's true. We did that. Resurrections, not the original Matrix. Because we are going to cover the original Matrix in advance of Matrix Resurrections, yeah. and it kind of worked out that we didn't, because now we can just separate the Matrix from that entire... I maintain... Just, okay. This is this is not about the Matrix franchise. This episode, not even kind of, but I will say, I've watched every Matrix movie. I think everybody in this room has. Same. Um, obviously, the first one is it's the only Matrix movie that exists. I really. agree. But the anim- the the Animatrix, I think I will count that. I as saw well. that shit on DVD somewhere. That's so good. Uh, but I will also readily admit, if I had to put it in order, like. The first and last one are like top two, hmm. like the 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 other two, the second and third, uh, were kind of ass. Ergo, vis a vis. Yeah, every time I fucking think I move, I think of that shit that you say. <laughs> like fucking Colonel Sanders is sitting in front of a, like a whole God himself, a whole Mother wall. Fucker. Ergo, vis a vis. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, Fuck he's him. just yeah. Yeah, yeah. He should the have like, creator. He should have had one of those real like like Virginia Slim cigarettes that he was smoking at the time he was saying <laughs> Virginia that. Slim. Yeah, Jesus like one of those long Christ. fucking yeah, the ones old ladies smoke. I was yeah, gonna you know, say exactly. like, you know like the fifty ones. seven year old lady. Yeah, <laughs> fucking exactly. puppet. it's on the what plastic thing. It's like that's yeah. <laughs> sticking out eight inches yeah. from his face. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so last person to pull it off was the penguin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I can tell we're all pretty fucking froggy tonight. Um. So, why are we here, though? We're not here to talk about and lambast the Matrix franchise, because, quite frankly, we could do that all night. We could. We are here to talk about video games based on comics. That is a, quite the departure from the intro. Thank God for that. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't sure exactly where you were going with that, but we knew it would come back around. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just had to list them all. You know, it's like Pokemon cards. You just got to collect them all. <laughs> well, once you're, like, halfway through the list, you're like, I'm fucking committed. You're committed. At this point. So... All right, guys, before we even get into the, you know, the actual brass tacks of what we're talking about here today, um, any idea what might have been the longest running softcore show on Cinemax? Hold on, let me think about it. Give me a second. Red Shoe Diaries? I was going to say Red Shoe Diaries. Probably. I don't know if Red Shoe Diaries was HBO? specifically, I think that was, I thought that was Showtime <laughs> originally. I don't know. <laughs> They're all the same. <clears throat> Wasn't David Duchovny on like an episode of Red Shoe Diaries once? Yeah, I think he was. I think he yeah. was. It's weird that you guys know that, but okay. No, that was like some random, like, how, how do you know that? Because I saw <laughs> it. Because <laughs> I fucking watched it. Did you see it? Did you see it before X-Files? I think it was. After X-Files, and then it was like, holy shit, that's Mulder. <laughs> so, I'm going to shout my wife out here. Because we've been watching the X Files uh, series from the beginning. You have been watching the X Files for years. You've been fucking dedicated to this thing. Years. That's a fucking haul. And it's we definitely could have been done with it years ago, but we only watch like a few episodes, maybe a, a week, maybe. But then we'll go stretches of, like three months not watching it, and then we'll go X Files, yeah, X Files, and then it. we'll spend like weeks watching X Files. What you just described is essentially my viewing habits of everything on Disney Plus right now. I'll get real into it for like a hot minute, and then I'll go a couple months now without watching it. So I don't know what that says about what Disney's putting out, but there it is. It says something. Definitely. So we've been we we're in season seven. Now this is back in the day when there are 22, 24 episodes a season. So it takes a hot ass minute to get through a season. 
So my wife is... I don't know what season she started doing this in. This is totally fucking pointless, but she's, she'll appreciate... Not that she listens to this, this, this show that often, but she'll appreciate that I'm shouting her out. To get on my fucking nerves, she's begun re- referring to Dave Duchovny as David Duchovny. <laughs> and, and she has, does with this fucking shit-ass grin on her face. She'll turn and look at me. Dutch company, right? And I go, no, not even fucking kind of. It's almost like looking at a famous director in the in the face and just saying, "Hey, Mike Bay." Yeah, that's his actual fucking name. Unlike Dutch company. <laughs> I mean, in some cultures it might be Dutch company. Not in Russian, motherfucker, because that's what that last name is. Isn't your wife German? No, his last name is Russian. Oh, I'm not putting the pieces together now. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. They're, they interlock. Yeah, David. I was, I was like. David Duchovny is listed as the top build act, top build actor. <laughs> he is. What, 66 Diaries? episodes. He is. Of Retro Diaries? From 1992 yeah. to 1996. Yeah, he's top billing on Wait, Retro Diaries, man. While, while he's chasing aliens, <laughs> he's getting soft core on. Yeah, because yeah. different audiences. I mean, sometimes you gotta... Sometimes the same. Was he like a sex addict in real life? Yes. Yes. That that's, makes sense. That's why Californication yeah. worked. Sex and drugs. You can see where it blossomed from. What was that show? Which one? Oh, Californication. Fucking great show. Jerry was a writer. That was great. That was. That first season was Fuck, exceptionally just good. Kiss. Yeah. What was it kicking and fucking? Was that what it was? Or punching and fu- punching and fucking? The book that yeah. he wrote, the character, was yeah. it punching and fucking or fucking and punching? I think it's I think it's p- fucking and punching. I think yeah. that's what it was. I actually have it. JP got it for me one year for Christmas. Shout out to JP. JP. There we go. JP is a fan of the show. He listens. Hey, okay, one more time. Shout out to motherfucking JP. JP, JP. So Denise Crosby was also one of the top bills on Red Shoe Diaries, and she was also on the an episode of the X Files. Wonder how much. Wonder if the casting directors just overlapped on that one. Yeah, how about that? I don't know. Sex and nudity severe. All right, here we go. Profanity, none. Nope. No, just belly button grinding. They were, there was no fucking there at all. It was a lot of making love. <laughs> <laughs> sensual, sweet, sensual. Just sensual acts. Red uh, shoe diary love. So yeah. there are people who clicked on this episode, future listeners, who went, ooh, video games based on <laughs> comics. <laughs> They're like, right. just get red shoe diary. <laughs> well, somebody got a whole like Mama's Family retrospective a couple episodes again, yeah, too. And they're better you know? people for it. They, they really are. are. So go watch the Red Shoe Diary, kids. All right, so I think, yeah, actually, Red Shoes, I think, yeah, 66 episodes beats the 59 episodes here for Erotic Confessions. So, but that went six seasons, though. I think most of the shows here should went from six to nine seasons. Yeah. Fucking genius. Hello. So what are you guys <laughs> drinking tonight? <laughs> Trying to get us back on yes, the rails here. Focus, guys. I'll start. I'm drinking an Urban Artifact, The Gadget. It is a sour raspberry blackberry. It is fucking sour, but it's good. Mac? Uh, I am drinking a Bombs and Pop Space Tart Shake ah. uh, from, uh, looks like, Cinderland's Beer Company here. Courtesy of Jeff Vandergrift. Thank you very much, Jeff Vandergrift. No problem. I was... Um, I Do feel you need like this... me to explain the, what the beer is? <clears throat> You're struggling, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a bomb pop sour. It's unfiltered, unpasteurized, keep cold, drink fresh. That's what's in it? That's not the description. Oh, that is not, I mean, it's a description. <laughs> Those are instructions. It is absolutely, <laughs> it, is, it is on the can. Oh my God. I'm going to count it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bomb pop sour. So, and it's actually, I'm really enjoying it actually. Yeah. And I might go home after this and actually have a bomb pop. I got them in the fridge. So, there you go. yeah. Should do that. Should probably put it in the freezer. This is, yeah. oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Fuck you. Here all day. All right. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking uh, Bell's Oberon, which is a summer wheat ale from Bell's Brewing in Michigan. Noah, what do you drink? Oh. No. He's drinking nothing, folks. But if he was here, he'd say, fuck you, Dave. He probably would. He's probably saying it now. <laughs> he doesn't know why. <laughs> he's 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 definitely like rinsing out a bowl right now, and the force just went, fuck you, Dave. So getting back to what our show is actually about today, uh, we're going to talk about some video games based on comics. Now, everybody who knows the three of us and have listened to the show know we're comic book nerds. We're, we're gamers. Yes. And so when two of our favorite things come together, uh, we got some fucking opinions about it. Mm-hmm. So I want you guys to know that 
I went back and replayed three of these games. Now, they were the three shortest that I, I was able to kind of get through because the other two are require substantial time commitments. You know, I was able to kind of get through these three games and basically the amount of time it would have probably took me to get through at least one of the other ones. Mm. Um, but I really had a good time with this one. What and going back and... Um, well, I, I mean, we're not going to reveal our lists right away, Jones. I mean, you got to you got to wine and dine me here first before we go ahead oh. and start. We already, what are we we already talk start, about? We started the foreplay with oh, I know eight hundred we'll softcore porn titles. Jesus, eight hundred episodes, Jeff. Sorry, <laughs> so probably seventeen titles. <laughs> I stand corrected. Yeah. Um, Actually, Jeff, you said corrected. Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. Um, I I went I I really kind of went back through my annals, if you will. Um, do you have to make an appointment for that? Uh, in my age, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Just making yeah. sure. Just just two fingers in there, yeah. in the annals. Just to, just to make sure everything's, everything's healthy. Make sure everything's working. Everything's working. Just, just leafing through there. All systems go. Yeah. <laughs> it was really strange after it was done and the guy just like got in his car and drove home. You know. Yeah. Sir, this is an Arby's. You can't do that here. First off, you can do anything you want in an Arby's parking <laughs> lot. You fucking know what you did, Arby's. You know. Oh shit. <laughs> um, but um, I I went back and actually went th- looked through all of my all of my video games that I own. And one of the things about me, dear sweet sweet listeners, um, I don't like to trade video games in. It's one of those weird things to me. It's like I spend so much money on a game. And, you know, working with Toys R Us and, and having the ability to, to access and buy a lot of those games for discounts and stuff like that, it's still a, a substantial financial commitment, right? And to trade them in for pennies on the dollar, I always thought was, you know, strange. So, you know, one day, you know, during a pandemic, I can go back and, you know, fucking play some stuff that maybe I haven't played in 15, 20 years. But man, there were some superhero games that... I came across I even fucking remember that I even had or played. Mm, yes. <clears throat> and and there are some and and I don't think any of us really had those on our lists, but you know, um like Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which I'm just going to throw that one out there because I couldn't even I didn't even fucking remember I bought that game. And um I realized when I saw it I was like holy shit. Like, and of course, this is Spider-Verse before there's a Spider-Verse, right? Because he plays four different versions of Spider-Man throughout the years in the game. Um, did not make my list, but I was like, wow, shit, I completely forgot about this. You know, um, some of the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games and, you know, you know, we're, we're going to talk about things that kind of span from your, I don't think we have any 8-bit games on here, but 16-bit kind of moving forward. Um, yeah. And I think we got some overlaps here on the lists too, but it was fun kind of going back and doing this because we had a little bit of a delay in between recording episodes i really had an opportunity to kind of like sink my teeth in on this one and i'm excited to talk about it cool talk about it then that's what we're Uh, here for yeah okay so let's let's fucking get in it let's do it so a couple of things i i kind of thought about when it came to just the video games in general and what we kind of chose for our lists and i kind of found that there are really four comic book properties that seem to lend themselves to the best video games, Mm -hmm. right? And I think also for all of us, I'm pretty sure, none of these were movie adaptations. Guys, remember that that phase in gaming from like 2001 up to about 2012 where every major comic book movie had a video game tie-in release and most of them were not that good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, none of these games really made this list, but I kind of found that of the titles here that seem to be most often good, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, Spider-Man, Batman, X-Men. Those seem to be the four that most commonly appeared in, in my library and in my experiences. Not really a lot of Superman games, not really... Because um, they're shit. Because they're shit. Um, Has there ever been a... Let me rephrase that. Has there ever been a good, been a good one in the last twenty years? Outside of Injustice, I would say. I was no. going to say, don't count Injustice. No. Okay, well, I you didn't say there's, that. There's nothing. Well, now you did. Because so it's not say. a Superman game. He's just in it. It's one of the few times I can actually like get behind Superman. 
You got behind games. him? No, I didn't, but I'm saying what I can. What kind of fucking person are he you? Would. No, it was terrible. He would. No. <laughs> but I'm saying it's, it's one of the times that I could actually, like, enjoy Superman in a video game. Mm. It's hard. I mean, that, I mean, what's that character going to fucking do? Just fly. Anything he wants. I, that's my point. That's why it's not fun in a video game. Because, like, how do you beat... You, you don't really lose if you're Superman. I maintain, and, and this is just from gaming experience. I feel like you guys will appreciate this. Or agree, at least. There's room... For a fucking spectacular Superman game, there is a fuck. There's potential there, the, and the reason isn't because the, the, the I don't I don't buy that the character's boring. I don't buy that the character's lame. People get like, oh, he can do whatever he wants. Like, yeah, the fact that he can and he doesn't speaks volumes about the character itself. Well, see, I I I, I mean, obviously, between Marvel and DC, there's always characters that draw parallels, right? And you know, one of the superheroes that I had zero interest in as as a kid, as a young adult, was Captain America. This guy's a he's a Boy Scout. He is, um, you know, altruistic. He's truth, justice, the American, very much like Superman. There's a lot of there's a lot of like similarities to how that character gets portrayed. And Jones, it was actually you who kind of changed my perspective on it because you shared with me. When Civil War came out. And, you know, Cap, obviously, was the first time that I felt in my experiences with Captain America that he really had a fucking opinion Mm. that was not exactly in line with what Captain America typically would stand for. And I think the Marvel movies did a really good job as well of really nailing that character. He has these moral, he has this moral compass that guides him, but he's not exactly a moral guy with a lot of the shit that he does half the time, right? Um... But um, if you can make me get behind fucking Captain America, and I will, f- I will die on that guy's sword. You said get behind fucking Captain America. <laughs> Listen, I know what I said. We heard the intro, <laughs> folks. I know what I said, and uh, if Stephanie is listening to this episode, she also knows what I said. It's America's ass. Uh, it is America's ass. I fucking love Captain America. I love Chris Evans. That's you know that'd be my. Not not necessarily my get out of marriage free card, but you know, and if he said he needed sunblock on his shoulders, I'd put it on. Not I respect gonna, that honesty. Yeah. On yeah, your left. I, uh, you can't have Mel and on the right. No. You can't I have just, melanoma. Uh, but but they made that character extremely interesting. Oh boy. Um, yes. They made that character extremely interesting. So you mean to tell me you can't figure out how to do that with Superman? Well that's my point. Yeah. And I just mean I think the character's fantastic. I think Superman's character is very fascinating, but not even just, not even talking about the, com- I mean, just as a game. Yeah. The reason we have not, we can't like, oh, there's been this great Superman game, because no studio, no development team has been able to figure out the proper way to do this. I'm not saying I have the answer, but I think some form of an open world Superman game, it has to be an open world game. Yeah. There's no version of this where it's like, well, this is this linear Superman. path. Like, nah, yeah. fuck that noise, man. This is a linear, this is a full on open world game with, with zones i'm talking planetary zones i'm talking extra planetary zones superman himself imagine having a game where you can do whatever you want right how do you stop that characters who can do more Mm -hmm. superman may be the most powerful being on the planet earth what about other planets right right what about uh the lantern corpse you know what about the martian you know there are other characters that exist outside of Earth. I keep, I keep hoping we ever get Brainiac in a Superman movie. Just once. You know we've had like fucking seven or eight Superman movies and not once have we gotten a character that wasn't really Lex Luthor? Because he's such a good character. Such I know good he is, yeah. but still. Like you can get away from that for like... Like Marvel was like, you know what? We're going to make all these movies and not use any of our main villains. Well, mostly they couldn't. But also, they really didn't jump into a main villain until really, I guess, Loki. Um, but, you know, you can do that with Superman. Superman's got some actually pretty fucking cool villains, and you could toss them in there and not be just Lex Luthor all the time. I'd agree with that. Or, 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 or you know, Jesse Eisenberg's fucking <laughs> Lex Luthor. <laughs> You know, his little Tourette's Lex Luthor. <laughs> Is it wrong that he was my favorite part of that whole thing? He was my favorite part. Because he not. was such a unique take on the character that was so I want to punch him in the fucking face. Although, not that we can talk about him very much, but Kevin Spacey. Was it Kevin Spacey? It was yeah. Kevin Spacey, yeah. He did a great job. Yeah. 
because we're gonna have to have a whole episode of the show where we try to separate. Yeah, we ha- we haven't had a bad Lex Luthor. No, we haven't. It's like we haven't had a bad Joker. I'll drink to Gene Hackman. All right, fucking right, we will. Absolutely. Or as I call him, Hackman. Ha! Um, <laughs> so, but, but but it it felt going back to the topic here. Yes. It really felt like the video games that were most that were the strongest, almost consistently from the games that I kind of looked through and wanted to pick from, always seemed to have those four characters in there. And one of them that I considered highly for this list had both. Spider-Man and X-Men. So uh, I left Arcade's Revenge out of there because I can never fucking beat it because there's one level that's the devil. There's always one. Always. There is. There is. Um, so um, I did five. I think you guys did five as well, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with with my number five. And I it, it was my number three, but it dropped down to my number five upon my replay of it just because there seemed to be a... Um, a break for me between the story of the game and the gameplay itself. And that is going to be um, Spider-Man, Venom, Maximum Carnage. Oh, boy. That's my that's my number five. Um, there are some things playing this game again. I mean, it was... This game did a lot for me as a child expanding my vision of Spider-Man. Because a lot of my stuff never really came necessarily from the comics, but it came from the the, the Fox shows, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm familiar with, with the common classic Spider-Man characters that are, you know, sometimes morally bankrupt, but still have redeeming qualities to them, like Lizard, like, you know, Sandman to an extent how some of these characters are portrayed, some of the classic Silver Age guys, right? But there's something about this game that I really enjoyed that they just went with characters who wanted nothing more but just to just kill everything around them. Like, there was no morality about them in any way, shape, or form. There's no redeeming qualities to them. They're all criminally insane. They're all evil as fuck. And all they wanted to do was just kill. And I kind of liked playing a Spider-Man game that had a very good story to it. I still remember and, the commercials for that. And a lot of characters to the... Oh, I know. The commercials were fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, that And had a lot of cool side characters. But I the th- one of the problems I had with the game was that there was a lot of, I think, fighting redundancy in the game. Where you had a whole bunch of um, street-level thugs and goons that you had to constantly fight. I thought you were kind of limited on some of the actual moves you can do with Spider-Man. My number four game had a similar playing style with 2D side-scroller, but the the combat style was just way more fun. Yeah, it was was very sort of classic Streets of Rage. It was Streets of Rage, yeah. Uh, So I also had this game on my list. So just some background. Game was released in 94. It was available on Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. This was the first video game release that was actually based on a comic book story and not just the characters. Uh, The soundtrack was by uh, rock band Green Jelly. I saw that. Uh, Ah. Where the fuck did they go? (laughs) Obscurity. Nobody really knows. Um, Maybe it was was like Green Day side project, but it was just (laughs) Trey Cool. Yeah, and I think two of the things that stood out to me playing the game as a kid... Uh, one was the commercial because I still remember that that guy in Carnage coming through the clouds yeah. at the end. Uh, the cartridge was red. Yes, it was uh, for Carnage, and all the other cartridges were black, uh, which I thought was cool. But playing as some of those other characters, like playing as Morbius, was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and there were like characters you're like, I don't know if those are even from the comics. Like no. they, they seem totally made up. Uh, but it was just a cool like cast of you know no good characters that are all out to to fight carnage well so so here here you go right so in the game this was the thing that i loved about the game is that you could play as both spider-man and as venom yep and i don't know about you jeff herb do you have a lot of experience playing this game have you played this game before it was a rental a few times yeah i didn't own it but i played it quite a bit yeah um i always played as venom I just thought it was more fun playing as Venom once you got to the point in the game that you could switch between the two characters. There's a lot of Venom, yes. Yeah. Um, but in this game, you have Black Cat, who I didn't fucking know anything about Black Cat at this point. She was in a couple 
uh, episodes of Spider-Man, but that was really it. 16-bit cleavage yep. got there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cloak and Dagger. Knew nothing about Cloak and Dagger at that point. A uh, little bit about Morbius. Morbius' character in the game, as Jeff said. Uh, Firestar. No fucking clue who Firestar was. And it's funny, in the game, they kind of like describe her as a not quite the human torch, but it'll do. <laughs> it's close That's enough. Very close enough, yeah. Uh, Captain America, probably the, the, the biggest known name now, but at that point, Captain America in the 90s wasn't really anything, right? Um, Iron Fist. The Immortal Iron Fist, there you go. Uh, Deathlock, never knew anything about Deathlock. Um, Shriek. Doppelganger. Oh, doppelganger. Doppelganger was sweet. Doppelganger yes. was sweet. Uh, Demogoblin. I never fucking knew anything about it. I completely even forgot Demogoblin and Carrion even existed. Yeah, yeah. There's and a lot of interesting characters in the Spider-Man universe. There are. And, and you know, the villain characters, uh, Shriek, Doppelganger, Demogoblin, Carrion, like nothing fucking redeeming about these characters at all, right? <laughs> and oh. Carnage. But I love that about the game, you know, like because like as you go through and you're playing it, and, you know, um, Spider-Man's kind of getting his ass kicked because what's cool about this game is that you don't, you, you go through levels per se, and you would think like a traditional game would be, okay, you get to the end of this level and you're going to fight a uh, doppelganger. And then you get to this next level and you're going to fight Demogoblin. No, you keep fighting them over and over and over again throughout the entire game. And right when they get down to like their last bit of health, they fucking leave. Like they escape. Like a good villain should. And then you go and you fight them again. So constantly in the game, you're just getting the same bad guys over and over again as you kind of proceed through the level, which I thought was kind of interesting in the gameplay itself. Um, Like you said, Jeff, I like the ability to like call on other heroes to help you when shit gets real. And that was one of the things about the game that I remember from a kid, or as a kid, is how many times shit got real in that game for me. And I'd be panicking, like, well, fuck, I gotta, I gotta call on Deathlock. I gotta call on Morbius to come and suck the life force out of, you know, whomever's in there. Um, and then, you know, you they eliminate the bad guys on screen and you can kind of, you know, keep playing the game and, and hopefully not die. So um it was it was an interesting introduction to that story. Um I felt bad when, you know, Let There Be Carnage came out as a movie mm-hmm. and they kind of touched on this storyline a little bit. And I just don't think it really did it any kind of justice. But um, the game was the game is enjoyable. Like I said, I think I like the story more now than I actually like the gameplay because the the gameplay just felt very it's redu- very repetitive. It yeah. is very repetitive, and I think it's very you were kind standard of, for the time. It was well. I'm gonna get into that a little bit because one of my other games that I have on my list, which is also a Spider-Man game, played very differently, and I I I kind of enjoyed how that played better. Um, but um, you know, solid, I think, for me, number five. It's a good pick. We're going to do this round robin. Uh, I assume you're just going to go down. Oh, okay, I'll go down. All right. We'll do that. That's what I assumed. All right, sure. All right, number four. Uh, and then this is another one on some lists. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Hmm. Fucking so much fun. I had a blast playing this again. Not that I wouldn't really have a blast playing a Ninja Turtles game in general, but, like, this brought back so many memories, like, of being 11 years old, 12 years old at Mike Anaskevich's house on a sleepover in the summer. And we would just stay up until 3 o'clock in the morning playing this game, right? Um, I had so much fun with the actual... And this is kind of my point going back to the um, um, the the gameplay for Carnage, is that it's very repetitive. In Turtles, it isn't. There's... Way more things you can do in that Ninja Turtles game for Super Nintendo, which came out a year earlier. It came out in 1993, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was 92. 92. So it came out, Konami released it in the arcade in 91, and then it was ported to the Super Nintendo in 92. Yeah. But, um, you know, you could fight, you could just do so many different things fighting in that game. There are different moves. You could um, basically ragdoll, you know, a bad guy. You, you threw bad guys into the screen. You could do running and sliding into the bad guys, jump kick. You had air moves. You had super power moves, which I thought were also cool because you could do it, but it also took your life away. Yeah. Um, but um, the music in this game was way better than it needed to be. It slapped real fucking hard. Um, 
played uh, one of the. I, I can't remember the last time I even played this game one player, right? But obviously, that's yeah, what I did. It's this one time. of those. It's one of those games where it's definitely not as fun playing yeah. one player. And I remember playing it in the arcade, and that arcade cabinet had like the most ridiculous like side panel graphics ever because it was like a real life april o'neill and then like semi-cartoon turtles and it, it just right. looked ridi- ridiculous but like you see it and it's like instantly recognizable yes. like it, hey that's what that was it was a worse version of the turtles on the side of that arcade cabinet than was in the actual like coming out of our shelves musical turtles <laughs> yeah, thing yeah right and, and it's 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 sort of confusing because this game was a direct sequel to the first ninja turtles arcade game but when they ported it, they're like, this is Turtles 4 because it's the fourth Turtles game on console. Yeah. Mm. So I'm like, is it 4 or is it 2? I don't really know, but there's four Turtles, so we'll go with that. Uh, I remember the opening video, like, verbatim. Yeah. That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. You know, the Turtles are watching the news. Krang's attacking the city. Uh, They steal the Statue of Liberty. April's reporting the news. Then they kidnap April while she's reporting the news. I'm like this is fucking awesome. It's like watching a cartoon. That's you such know, a good game. You know what's kind of fun about that is you just said that, Jeff. Is that Nickelodeon? For those of you uh, that may not know this, I, I kind of hope you do. They kind of announced it at Comic Con. The Nickelodeon got the rights to the original 1980s, early 90s Ninja Turtle cartoon, and in the last two weeks, they started they started airing it on Nickelodeon at 12 and 12:30. So it's going opposite Rick and Morty. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit torn. <laughs> torn. I'm torn on that. Even though I've seen all those Rick and Mortys like ten times, I'm still torn. Um, but I've been watching it and <clears throat> having them sitting around the TV where Shredder is kind of like tuning in and talking to them directly was just in one of the episodes that I watched. Yeah. It was really yeah, like awesome. this cool Twilight Zone kind of like feeling of 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 watching that happen. What's yeah. your favorite Ninja Turtles episode? I think I remember what mine is, but I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm not making up an episode in my head that didn't exist. <laughs> like, just bringing up to storylines together. Um, do, you, do you recall what it might be? It had to do with Leonardo sitting in a corner, <laughs> watching... I think I got opened up to that. Watching Raphael. I, 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 I guess I should have. <laughs> just teed it up. Want some food? Get him some food! <laughs> he He's some gonna food. be okay. Oh my god, that fucking cuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I can't particularly recall like what my favorite episode would have been. But Dave and I were talking about this. Uh, we were together a few nights ago, uh-huh. and I was like, "Holy shit, Ninja Turtles is on at midnight every night now!" And so I started watching them back, and I was like, yeah. "It's fucking awesome." Oh, well, it's bringing back so many memories. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't. It, I mean, I probably have to watch the series again. You know, just to kind of get you a good answer on that. The thing that I remember most about Ninja Turtles Jones actually involves you. Oh, fuck. When we went to see TMNT uh-huh. in theaters back in, what was that, 2010, I think, yeah. somewhere in there, right? And um, <clears throat> there is that scene where um, oh, Raphael... God damn it. What was his character in that? He was like the knight... Oh, fuck, I don't remember. S- something. But he was like a vigilante. He was a vigilante. Masking as a vigilante. <clears throat> yeah, he was wearing like an armor thing and everything. And Leonardo, who's been out of town, like comes back and, you know fucking gets ready to own this character and he kind of does in the mm-hmm. fight and you know when it's revealed that it's raf leo and raf have this fucking major like counterclockwise watching each other so that's stalking the best part of the whole fucking film. in the rain in front of like neon signs and they're talking such shit on each other and you know when leonardo just like i just remember him saying like he just looks at raf and goes and all these blah 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 but it's because I'm better than you. I'm just better than I'm you. I'm just better than you. I wanted to get up a fucking so fight fighting right words. there. Oh my god. And Jones, you leaned to me and said, this is what fucking Star Wars should have been. Yep. Oh god, yeah. And like that that has stuck with me like my entire life. Every little kid. Talking about that. Every little, every little kid and within a certain age group, you know who you are, had a favorite turtle. You didn't have two favorite turtles. Fuck you, you're a lying. It's always one. You have one. No, nobody had two favorites. You, There's you absolutely have, no way. You may, have, you may have been like, oh, I mean, I do like Donatelli's cool too, but you were no. you were a Michelangelo guy. You know, or I was a Raphael guy, for example. And in that, everybody, when you're real little, pretend you're a Ninja Turtle, and you and your buddies go on fighting crimes, or you spar each other, something to that effect. Yep. But there's always, there's always, who's better? Yeah. Right? Raph? Or is it Leo? Right. Donatello and Michael, they're not in the running. They don't want that. They that don't spotlight. need that. 
they got their own spec. They have their own shelf life. Yep. Wrath and Leo. God damn it. That scene was so good. I got goosebumps. I'm yeah. just going to go, motherfucker, this is it right here. I've yeah. always wanted to see this. Yeah. And they fucking threw down. They did. It got real, real fast mm-hmm. between them. So much family animosity came out. Yep. In that real life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Night Watcher. That's what the there character was. I was pretty close. And apparently the guy, as I'm looking on IMDb right now, apparently the guy who voiced the character Colonel uh, Santino... Oh, um, I don't know what you guys, right. no, I, I don't have no fucking clue. His name's John DiMaggio, but I swear to God, I'm showing you this because he's fucking Seamus' stunt double. That's a uh, that's the guy who's Bender oh. on Futurama. Oh, look at that really? Yeah, he's gonna yeah. be at Comic Con this weekend. Oh shit! All right, how yeah. about that? Yeah, he's a very famous voice actor. Okay, yeah, I didn't apparently not famous enough because mm-hmm. I didn't know he was. Oh shit! But I don't really nah, do. I don't. I don't. You I don't, just saw Seamus. I I did see. I, I <laughs> absolutely saw. Like I saw Seamus on Hard Times. <laughs> Just, so that's like the Seamus just, that if you put him in, in an AI program, you know, he, that's what yeah, comes he, up. Yeah, he lives, that's AI Seamus. He lives, <laughs> that is, he lives far enough from a gym that he doesn't go all the time, but close enough to a McDonald's he can't say no. <laughs> that's how I'm looking at that. Um, But anyway. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Turtles in Time. A couple things I thought was really interesting about this game. Number one, this came out at a time when Secret of the Ooze was, was out. So they started to kind of blend the worlds together because this is when Toka and Razar made their first appearance in a video game. Yep. You know, and, and as as I was as a kid, not Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh, Jesus, yeah. There's, was there anything like that would piss you off more as a kid that you go to a Ninja Turtle movie and there's going to be two fucking full ble- like full blown mutants and it's not Bebop and Rocksteady? I never cool, quite understand that logic. I'm sure and there's then they a make, reason. they make them like, in every game, they're the... The boss in the first level because yeah. they're like the weakest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's a fucking rhino and a warthog. Yeah, like how are they so weak ass? It's like Glass Joe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Glass Joe. Um, and then like Super Shredder is is the final boss in the game. Um, does nothing that Super Shredder would normally do. Apparently, he just has fucking mystical powers now. But I'm not gonna really like watch a play yeah. a ninja turtle video game and yeah. like be like that's where i draw the fucking yeah. line <laughs> um, they're traveling through time and fighting fucking dinosaurs and you're fucking, worried about Shredder's they're they're superpower. fighting the foot soldiers riding velociraptors yeah Which that's badass. fucking badass um but also one of the things that i kind of picked up here um level eight on uh, neon night riders is the is the name of the stage um the year 2020 a.d they were Which past that now. Is three years oh. ago. Oh fuck me! And their version of 2020 is not <laughs> our version of 2020 <laughs> at all. It's usually how that um, works. You know, I feel like that's the version that would have happened if like MySpace and Facebook never took yeah, never right. took hold, <laughs> right? Um, but such a cool game. Um, the levels. I thought it was really cool in this game too because it starts out as like a regular Ninja Turtle game. You're fighting in New York City. You got to fight Baxter Stockman. You're in the alleys. You're fighting Mecha Turtle. Yeah. You're in the sewers. You're fighting the Rat King and everything. You get to the Technodrome. Like, it's almost like the first half of the game is like every Ninja Turtle game you'd expect to play. But then you get sent back in time and they just do all this really cool shit with the characters, integrating different aspects of the levels into the gameplay. Like, I thought the um, the Skull and Pro- Crossbones level, which is 1530s on a pirate ship. There's like a pirate ship in the distance that's just shooting off cannonballs at you while you're fighting. I just thought that was really fucking cool. Yeah, I think the best part about this game is that we didn't have to swim in the fucking dam. Yes. Whew. <laughs> there was none of that. Every, every, there's a collective yeah. sense of uh, video gamer frustration because of that fucking oh level. <laughs> First Y'all. Turtles game. Can I, can I, you know, and I know that we joke rightly or wrongly about Mac and his not playing video games for the topics that we cover on the show. Can I tell you how proud of you I am <laughs> that the level of detail you're going, this is the most. My, no- my notes <laughs> for each game are like three bullet I points. Do- I have none. Yeah. I just wrote down the names <laughs> and I'm just going to go from like my experience. But the fact, this is, motherfucker, can we, can we talk about how... <laughs> Jones and I aren't even going to talk this okay, episode. We're Jones, just, like, Jones just took his glasses off. We have covered some of the greatest fucking games that have come out in the last five, ten years, and you played none of them outside of an hour or two. But I respect game your gangster. Like I respect your gangster to the point where you actually played some of these fucking games. 
and have detailed, articulated, well-articulated, thought-out, and critical-minded notes. Motherfucker, thank you. This is the first time... For the listeners at home, this is the first time Dave has ever brought a notebook to one of our shows. He has, yeah. And that I'm shit talking, is filled out. I'm, look, I'm yeah. like, I, I don't know. I can't compete with this. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean I, all of this like, with love and respect. Like, God damn, son, I'm proud of this. Like I said, I, I, I'm we, just sitting back enjoying it. We, we, had, we had the break, and I was like, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to fucking yeah. show up. <laughs> I like I'm gonna it. fucking show up uh, for this one. How Dave's going into detail, that was us talking about Bioshock. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and me just sitting there with a fucking bag of popcorn, like, and then what happened? And then, and, oh, and then they, what did they do? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was wow. a good time. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time. Um, yeah, he's still on his second fucking game. We each have five. <laughs> we, we will be here. Stay tuned for part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> okay, just going to go and put a pin offense. in this one and, and everything. Um, but I just thought it was really cool. My favorite level in the game was one that I kind of remember just even from a kid. Bury my shell at Wounded Knee. I just always thought that was a really cool name. And then, like, I learned what that actually was, like, riffing off of. Mm. And I always get that, like, question right in trivia games and Jeopardy and shit because of the Ninja Turtles game. Nice. So... Uh, that was my number four. Number three uh, is one that uh, you guys said you've never really heard of before, and um, it it's it, it's it was on Sega Genesis when I played it. It was the first game that I really fucking got into as a kid, like on my own, not because my brother played it or you know because like my friends were playing or anything. It's just something I really fucking loved because it was a Spider Man game. And it was a really good Spider-Man game. And that was... It was just called Spider-Man. That's how I knew it. It was just packaged as Spider-Man. But later iterations of it will refer to it as Spider-Man versus the Kingpin. Now, Spider-Man versus the Kingpin, I loved first off because of how much of Spider-Man's rogue gallery it featured. Which is kind of a... I, I, kind of like a repeating element, I think, in a lot of Spider-Man games as you kind of go through. Because yeah. Spider-Man has arguably the best rogues gallery or second best rogues gallery compared to how you feel about Batman. Yeah. I'd go with that. So in this game, this is basically the very first time you have a Sinister Six situation coming up. And that's really how the game kind of plays out. Kingpin has, um, you know, basically is holding New York hostage. And he's got a bomb. A bomb. Yep, that's right. He's got a bomb in the city. And all of Spider-Man's classic, you know, well, not all of them, but a lot of Spider-Man's classic villains show up here, and they all have a key. And you need these keys to be able to set the bomb off. Now, when you start playing the game, you've got 24 hours to to get the keys and get everything and, and you know, um, try to defuse the bomb before it goes off. And in the game, that clock is actually counting down while you're playing it. Um, so the game features Kingpin... Doc Ock, The Lizard, Electro, Sandman, Hobgoblin, and Venom. And this is one of the first games that I played where, first off, Venom, it's the first time I really, like, found out anything about Venom. Um, but he, like, pops in and out of, of stages just randomly. Like, he's not exactly the main bad guy, but he's there just to fuck with Peter, yes. which is basically what, what, he does. what he does, right? Um, but in the game... There's a lot of Spider-Man elements that really are incorporated, I think, very well in terms of any kind of video game adaptation of a, of a comic book character. Um, I love the web slinging in this game. It's, it's simple, it's, but it's really effective, and you can actually kind of nicely web sling in this game. There's especially a level in like Central Park where you end up battling the Sandman and then Venom fucking shows up to just wreck your weekend. But... You know, you basically web sling through the whole park okay. until you kind of get to that point. Um, Peter has to take photos in this game, which is one of the things I loved about it. Because Peter's web fluid is limited. So in order for him to get web fluid, he has to take pictures and sell them to J. Jonah Jameson <laughs> in the game. Web cartridges aren't cheap, folks. <laughs> and that's how he that's how you regenerate your web fluid or else you can't fucking shoot your webs in the game uh the wall crawling is fun um you know there's there's a whole thing in like level four of the game where it just starts off with j jonah jameson just screaming at spider-man <laughs> and then hobgoblin like shows up um it was just it just it incorporated so many cool things about spider-man that i love and for being my first real experience with spider-man in a video game and i don't know if it's spider-man's first real video game or not 
Um, but it felt that way to me. It just, I thought it really just nailed those elements. Now, it's not um, a long game in particular. Like, you, I, I played through it in about 40 minutes um, when I went back and played it. But it was just fun. And, like, there's a point, too, where, like, in the game, you could just go back and be Peter Parker. So you're in the middle of a level, and maybe you're dying, your, your, your health is real bad. You can stop, you switch over to Peter... And then you end up back in his apartment, and he's just chilling while his while your while your health regenerates, but the clock is ticking on the bomb. So there's this constant thing that's going back and forth between the character, which plays out about Peter Parker, which is which is why I kind of moved this up pretty high on on. That's my a very list creative that idea. Yeah. So, um, you know, of course, then Venom, you know, kidnaps MJ, and you know, Kingpin, kind of like how Shredder did in TMNT goes in and like hijacks Spidey's signal and says, you know, I, I kidnapped your friend's wife, you know, because he doesn't know. Right. He thinks that, you know, it, it, it was just really, just really cool. Um, and one of the first games I really loved, again, not an overly complicated game, but really fun, really, I think, true to Spider-Man and Peter Parker and that whole thing. And um, just a lot of fun. Um, number two for me, is going to be Marvel Spider-Man. And I'm going to say that only because I haven't finished playing it. Um, you know, I started playing it a little while ago. It's why I bought a PS4. And then I just kind of got so distracted web-slinging in the game and just exploring parts of, of New York that I kind of got away from some of the gameplay. Um, probably, I think, from a lot of people's list, one of the top two superhero games ever made. Currently, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. That's number two on my list. Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're playing. Did you finish playing it? Oh goddamn! Okay. It. Well, I know because we've been talking oh, about yes. Spider-Man Two, and I, I know well, that when you I were, realized it was coming, like I gotta finish this shit. Yeah, but you haven't finished Miles Morales yet. No, I haven't okay. started it yet. And Jeff, you've you've played Marvel's Spider-Man as well, right? No, no, I you haven't. Have a PS4. You haven't played it. No, I, and I, I think and you would get even it just on my list. And that. when when we were prepping for this show, I was like, Spider-Man would be on my list if I played it, and out of I just felt it wasn't fair to put it on my list because I don't have the experience other than, you know, watching some playthroughs and yeah. playing demos and whatnot. I, um, but because I, the last PlayStation I bought was a PS2, so I have not played whew. Sony Spider-Man. Yeah, I um, I mean, I definitely did not get a PS5 for this game, but it is definitely a bonus. I got a PS5 because they announced an ex- a Wolverine game by the same developers uh, behind Spider-Man, and I, I it's funny. I said, I always said, hey, listen, if they came up with a really good Wolverine game, whatever console, I just buy it. You absolutely and, did. And then when I saw that teaser trailer, well, it was like two years ago now, I just went, well, guess it's money time. where my mouth is. Guess it's time. Because <laughs> I'm going to buy and play the shit out of that game. Well, it's funny that you say that. Because when I, I've, I've always kind of said about Nintendo, that I will buy a Nintendo as soon as Zelda or Metroid comes out for it. Like, when one of those two titles come out, Regardless of where I am in life, I'm going to go drop my two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it's going to cost, to get the system. Um, I have never been a big PlayStation guy, and maybe that's just because my my Nintendo loyalties growing up and that being the system I always played, and you know, I got Xbox because we would play a lot of games when we were roommates, and you know, Halo is awesome and there's a lot of really good games that came out. And it's like, well, fuck, you know, Nintendo's not caring all these. I need to get a new system. And it's one day I realized I'm a fucking grown-ass man with a job. I can get a PlayStation also. Yes. Like, why am I just limiting myself? You know, there's a great, there's a whole bunch of fucking titles that I've just never really got a chance to play. So when Spider-Man came out, I wanted to get, and this is why I'm saying this, I wanted to get the exclusive Spider-Man PlayStation 4. That they released. And I wasn't able to get it. Now, fast forward to Comic-Con this past year. Again, um, they announced Spider-Man 2. And they show that 13-minute gameplay where you're chasing after the lizard while Kraven's army is trying to track you down. And it's fucking you and Miles. And you got the black suit on, right? And then at the end of that whole... They're like, oh, by the way, we're coming out with an exclusive PlayStation 5 that has the symbiote eating the red on the PlayStation console. And I'm like, well, fuck. Pre-order in that. And I did. So I got my PlayStation 5. It's coming in the beginning of September. And uh, 
got to find a game to play for it before Spider-Man comes out because Spider-Man will not be coming out for it in September. It won't come out till October. But um, fun story about that. So uh, in our group chat, we were talking about the fucking Spider-Man PS5. And I was like, man, I really want that. But I have like all these other expenses. And me and my wife were talking and I was like, I think it's time to buy a PS5. I, I was like, time. this Spider-Man is coming out. And, she, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll just wait. Like it didn't sell out the first day. Fast forward a week later, we were day drinking a couple of days ago. And we're at the bar and Melissa's like, oh, I want to buy this thing. And I was like, well, if you're not going to buy that, then I'll buy it. I was like, because I'm either going to buy that or I'm going to buy a PlayStation, the Spider-Man PlayStation 5. And she's like, don't order that. I already ordered it. Well, there you go. Fuck. That's love, like, baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, had to, I had to call Stephanie before I was going to do it because she had made mention to me like a year ago that on like the top of shit I might get Dave for a birthday or Christmas was a PS5. And uh, I called her and I said, listen, babe, all right, first off, this is Jason DeCostro's fault. Fuck you, Jason. You've cost me a lot of money this year. Jason's also the reason why I got the fucking Simpsons arcade machine, uh, because he found the special where it was like $300 off. And he's like, hey, Dave. I'm like, fuck. Um, but um, so I had to call her and had a full conversation about, all right, so I want to tell you what I'm, what's going on right now. <laughs> I'm not calling to ask you for permission, but I think we should make an informed yeah. <laughs> couple's decision because this is a just, substantial just expense. letting you know. It is a substantial expense. It's a courtesy call. It yeah, is. I respect that. And it's like, you know, honey, I'm just going to finance it on my credit card and I'll just be basically pushing off my payment another four months. You know, what's what 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 kind of a big deal is that? Uh, and she's like, well, um, I had it on a list of things to get you for Christmas, but I, I don't think we should, like, we've been spending a lot of money on things and on each other and everything. And she's like, I think we should reel it in. So go ahead and buy it. I'm like, good. Cause I already did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said this wasn't permission yeah. call. Now, so, was it? Uh, yeah. So we'll have those on September 1st. Oh man. So, uh, and then we have to wait till October 20th. Yeah. I mean, Spider-Man. a really good opportunity Two. then. Uh, you said you played the, the PS4 version. Yes. But did you finish it? No, I haven't. Well, there's your... You got yeah. a, a solid month or so right. to run through on the PS5. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if the saves migrate because you can, through PS Plus, you can download the PS5 version. Yeah. Uh, did I buy that? Fuck, I don't even know if I had, if I downloaded or I bought it. But either way, since it's on my list, I'm going to talk about it and we'll just kind of skip it when it gets to my turn. Uh, it's number two for a reason because... Um, it, it probably could be number one. Honestly, it probably could be. But my number one is just so fucking good. Um, Mine is too. But Spider-Man on PS5, can't speak to PS4, but I assume it's just as good, obviously. Uh, the graphical fidelity, you know, the ray tracing, 60 frames per second web slinging is so fucking satisfying. And it's not even... Look, there are parts of the game that I don't like. I, I've never played a perfect game. There, there's. I don't like the Mary Jane levels. That shit irritates me. It's not Mary Jane. It's just a pointless ass slow down, sneak around, stealth, and it's not even good stealth. They're not good at they're not good at stealth. But beyond that, the rest of the game is five stars across the board. One of my favorite things to do, especially in the beginning when I first started playing the game, was just when I realized that there was just all these Marvel locations that I could just check out. Yeah, and just going to. Stark Towers, the Avengers Sanct- Tower, just taking a picture. Sanctum go, Santorum. Look at that. Here we are. We're going to Jessica Jones's bar. Yeah. Or her, or, or Alias uh, Investigations, rather. Yeah. And just going like, eh, right here, huh? If only there was a way I'd get to uh, Westchester and go to the X-Men. <laughs> I can't yeah. do that, goddammit. But I wish I could. <laughs> there's, there's a secret place on the map that you can actually, if you hit the right location, you can go off and just swing yes. up to upstate New York. Now... To, to the beyond the technical aspects of the game and just the fanboy of the game, the gameplay loop is very satisfying. Uh, just the combat's fantastic. Uh, it's not overly complicated. It's the, the mark of a good game that has like combat elements, like fist to fist combat elements. A mark of a good game for me, because this is all subjective really, is easy to pick up, difficult to master. Because there are combos in this game, there are little bits and pieces. You know, there's there's gadgets and abilities that you can max out and upgrade, and playing the game through and just I have this I, when I was playing it, I would play it for like a weekend, you know, like on a Saturday night for an hour yeah. or two, and I wouldn't touch it for like two weeks, and I'd come back to it, 
and I wouldn't have to, I didn't have to relearn things. It just, it was so easy to kind of just play through. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it is easily probably the greatest comic book game, uh, video game in the last five years. Easy. Oh, for sure. Easy. Yeah. Um, and it was the first time you really experienced, you know, web slinging. Yeah. From that perspective. Wasn't there where, another game? Where it felt like that, really. So that the, was 3D? There, well, if you, right. go, if you go back to the Spider-Man movie video games, there was, those, yeah. there, there was some decent web slinging that you yes. could do in that. Um, but this this was the truest form. You were, you were saying about how there are different locations you can explore on the map, Jones. Do you know one of the first things that I did when I was exploring the map? Baxter Building? I don't know. Nope. Uh, uh, I let me went, give me one more. Let me give me yeah. one more. Was now is it a comic book location or is it a real life location? It's a real life location, but also blends into pop culture. Madison Square Garden, Ghostbuster Firehouse, the Ghostbuster uh, fucking Firehouse, call. absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, but it's cool that Madison Square Gardens in it and and everything else too. But um, when I realized that the firehouse was in there and I could go there. Um, and there's a ghost spray painted on the back of the firehouse. If you go around to the back and everything, it just, it was so fucking satisfying for me. Mm-hmm. It's like, this isn't, and, and, you know, Ghostbusters is a Sony, it's a Sony property. So they could fucking Venkman and company could have been in <laughs> there. Could you imagine web slinging and like all of a sudden just the, the, the Ghostbusters car just <laughs> Ecto pulled out. Ecto-1 <laughs> just pulls out <laughs> and you're like, just <laughs> fuck. And then you run into something i would and, say yeah. uh and without going to spoiler territory for for jeff especially uh the story's good um it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread but as a spider-man game goes it is really really satisfying and has a satisfying conclusion there's a lot of spider-man in this game oh well, yeah there's like a lot of it's not there's a lot of there's a lot of story that goes on. You know, there's a lot of things going on with a lot of characters and a lot of places, and Peter's kind of in the middle of it. Where you know, if it's a Spider-Man movie, you pick one of those things and you kind of focus on that. But in the game, they give you like three or four. You know, it acts as an origin story for for the next game that comes out, basically. And well, even um, in the when they first announced it at, at that E3, I think it was. 2018 or something yeah. like that something like that they're like here's the first game tra- gameplay trailer oh by the way here's miles morales at the end yeah mm-hmm. like right in the first trailer how does miles morales compare it's short well miles morales is a very short game it's a very uh, short game I, it's on I'm sale for 20 again. bucks this week if you want to buy it for ps5 in anticipation of delivery of your system i feel like it's free on ps plus i feel like it is because one of those two games i either downloaded miles off of ps plus for free and bought the ps5 spider-man or the other way around one of them's free <laughs> which is a really good deal um and last thing i'll say about the game uh so i'm not too long-winded about this the best decision they made with this game is because i, I and, and i'd have been very disappointed had they not gone this route uh is that there is there's no you're unlimited in your web slinging you you have unlimited web cartridges you have unlimited web yeah. fluid within your body like there's none of that micromanaging shit a lot of games like to do uh which we'll get to with some of these other comic book games well it makes it more real i guess yeah I'm not, like that. I'm not playing a video game because <laughs> i fucking swing yeah i don't need fucking link sword to break after i hit four things with it and i have to go find a new fucking sword when i play zelda fuck you zelda it just and that actually no the games are amazing but it's still frustrating when my fucking sword breaks after I hit somebody three times. But uh, yeah, number two on my list. Did you say it was number two on yours? Number two on mine. Yeah. Uh, number one on mine. Um, it's the one of the three that I've played. I actually own all three of them, but I've I've played the first one, um, and I loved it um, as Batman Arkham uh, Arkham Asylum. That that game was so much fucking fun to play. It's a banger. It is a banger, and then some. Um, I love when you know because you have such good stories with comic books already, and you have such a great litany of characters that you can choose from and everything. When a comic book movie came out, and we got the video game adaptation, it was never really it never really quite hit never really quite was satisfying now in like those early spider-man games for you know that i had for gamecube and uh xbox 360 and everything you would have the main story mode and then there'd be offset things where they had different characters in there and stuff like that that you could play 
and fight and everything and expand it on a little bit. Um, but those were never quite good. But every once in a while, a studio comes out and says, you know what? Fuck it. Make a Batman video game. Just make a Batman video game. Okay. Um, make like, and, and we're just going to make the greatest fucking superhero video game maybe ever made. In, in, in those Arkham games. And oh, by the way, just because we feel like flexing our dick muscles just a little bit more here, we're gonna, just going to sit there and just kind of fucking do cock push-ups with the power thrust. Um, we're going to get Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill to fucking voice yeah. Batman and the Joker, right? I mean, come on. And uh, please forgive me for my failure to remember, um, I think Arlene... The woman who does uh, Harley Quinn, she she voiced Harley uh, Quinn. You're not. Also. For, I can't unforgive or forgive. I don't fucking know her name. No, <laughs> it's some um, lady. That's but not, you know, that considering right. that, like, those are the three <laughs> voice actors that they got from the TV show, from the animated show, to yeah. voice the characters in this. But um, it made it so much fucking more real for me to have their voices lent to it because those voices yeah because me, we grew those, up with the animated series and and I think for a lot of us the animated series for for all of these are are tentpole. Uh, you know, adaptations of what we think these characters are more so than the movies. You know, I know like with Jeff, we love Kevin Smith and he fucking talks about 1989 Batman, you know, with Michael Keaton all the yeah. time. But like the one that we had that was waiting for us at home every day at four o'clock was Batman, the animated series. And that is really my adaptation of what these characters are and to have them in the fucking video game uh, is awesome. Um, the combat mechanics of this game are so much fun. You know, all the different ways that you can you can kind of combine things and um, be able to to move around bad guys and 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 battle and fight. Um, you know, I think the graphics in the game are are awesome. I like that it's in Arkham Asylum because it's open, but it's also not. You're still kind of confined, um, and they didn't. They didn't hit you with all the characters that they could. No. There's tons of references to basically every Batman character in this game. And they show up in the other adaptations as we kind of get there. But, you know, you've got Harley Quinn. You've got the Joker, obviously. Um, you've got Scarecrow, Scarecrow. You've got Bane. You've got Poison Ivy. You've got Killer Croc. You know, you've got to solve riddles. Mm -hmm. But the Riddler doesn't really appear in the game. Which is fantastic. Which is so fucking good. He's yeah. just, like, found a way to hack into Batman's shit and, you know, um, just talk to him that way, which was just really cool. Um, you know, I like the story. Um, and it was just really fun. And, and there's a lot of playability in the game, too, with, with all the different challenges you have to do and the puzzles you need to solve. Um, it really emphasizes... Um, all the different aspects of Batman because it's not a simple, you know, beat em up, punch em kind of game. There's a lot of detective stuff that you have to do. There's a lot of, you know, you said it with Spider Man too, because I look at these games being very similar to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, where you're in stealth mode and you have to you have to kind of creep around and hide and and sleuth and, and all these other kind of things. Beyond Batman, and this is what I love about the game too, when you read the character biographies in like the pamphlet inside the game and you get the Batman, they describe Bruce Wayne as being the absolute peak of physical, of human physicality and mental acumen. Like he is the pinnacle he's of what peak a, Batman. he's peak of what a human can be yep. and without being a superhero. And that's so fucking cool to kind of read them say it that way because he is. Usually when I try to explain to people, like, why Batman is a bad motherfucker, I quote that shit because it is such an accurate representation. Yeah, He's without a genius. A doubt. He is, like, mastered multiple martial arts. He is a, a, a brilliant deductive mind. Like, you can't get more just as a human and not an alien, not a superhero with powers, not a crazy, yeah. no, just a badass, disciplined human being. Bruce Wayne, of all fucking people. Yeah. Little Bruce Wayne. Billionaire Bruce playboy Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Philanthropist, all that shit. Uh, now, uh, not to, to cut you off here, uh, and not that I'm piggybacking you because I don't do that shit, but uh, while although Arkham Asylum is not my number one. Before you get to that, can I talk a little bit about Arkham Asylum? Sure. Because that was also my number one. Arkham Asylum slash Arkham City. Well, see, Arkham I Asylum... I I haven't is, played the other two. That's why I couldn't put them on the yeah, list yet. So 
the Arkham Asylum for me was the first game that made you feel like Batman. It yep. didn't feel like I'm playing a Batman game. It's I am fucking Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Not fucking Batman like Dave no, wants to fuck Superman. It's too late, but, Jeff. You already no, said Captain it. America. Get it right. <laughs> but you do both. I mean, God You're bless not kidding anybody. God, God bless America. <laughs> uh, it was dark and gritty, and it just felt like Batman. Everything that Dave touched on, from the combat mechanics to the detective work to the look and the feel, it all felt like Batman. And fucking pour one out for Kevin Conroy, man. I will drop fucking, fucking lootly, man. That's my Batman all Absolutely. day. Uh, and the story was fantastic. And then. I mean, it was 2009 Game of the Year. Uh, it won a shit ton of awards. Dead. And it spawned the Arkham series, which eventually led to Arkham City, which is like the pinnacle, which basically took everything that they created in Arkham Asylum and just like, let's just take it out of the asylum yes. and just make a whole city well, that's a fucking because shit at the, at the end, At the end of the game, you have the, the police banner going off and they're talking about two-face officers down you know and you know gordon is is kind of done with what he's been doing that night but batman's like all right gotta go to work you know and um that goes right into the second game you know and then of course now you just have a whole fucking gotham city as your map right so which leads me to my number one man we're all over the fucking place with those, these lists so Arkham City is my is my is my number one, uh, and man, shout out to Insomniac and Spider Man. I know Spider Man Two is gonna be great. I'm I know Miles Morales is great. I know Wolverine's gonna be great. And I swear to God, if it's not, I'll have wasted like five hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> on a console. I'm never playing again, dude. That thirteen minute like gameplay trailer that they showed that they had from Comic Con for Spider Man Two for Spider Man yeah, Two without so fucking without good. any of the Venom reveal at all or anything just him in the in the suit just in pursuit of the lizard with Craven's fucking forces like fuck how all right I just have to get if this Dave had glasses he'd have taken them off just now I, I did and they weren't even there I just <laughs> I just instinctually went to remove them um Craven the Hunter we've not gotten him yet unfortunately we're going to. And I'm not on board, and I've not been on board with the Sony universe of Spider-Man characters that they're doing. doing Because you, it doesn't fucking matter to me if Spider-Man's not involved. You know that's why, as much as I will, I will, I'm gonna give a flower to Tom Hardy's Venom because I love Tom Hardy, and I, I think that that portrayal of the character is is spot on. Nothing else about those movies is to me. And having a Venom walk around without the fucking spider on his chest bothers the shit out of me. It should. Because that's not how it is. Like everything about. And we just. Sony just wants Venom to work so bad. They really, really do. They're just. They're trying so fucking hard. They're trying a little too hard. hard. You know, it started with. It started with Topher Grace. And. I know, Jones. I know. We all. We all saw it. We all saw it. Um, But they've just not made the right movie with Spider-Man and Venom. They just fucking haven't. And, and you know, I know we're getting into this game and, well, fucking, he's, he's got the black suit and they hinted it at the end of the first Spider-Man game with, you know, Harry and there's this, there's the goo and, you know, it's, so you know it's the symbiote and everything. Yeah, well, but, <laughs> but, you know, to give me a portrayal of Craven the Hunter where he's a fucking like black market mercenary who's coming to New York City with an entire army at his disposal to fucking hunt Spider-Man and and the other things going on in Gotham. It, it's perfect. And whatever they're going to do in this movie with Aaron Taylor Johnson is not going to fucking be that. It just isn't. And I know that. It's going to be it's I don't I don't, I don't have words. I watched the trailer and I promptly said Yep, not gonna watch that. Yeah. I same thing for me. I, I, it was the same thing with the Morbius trailer. Yeah. I had no interest yeah. in going to see that, that movie. Came at all. Out yeah. Till now. <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna watch that shit. There's I won't some... watch it for free. No, I'm and no and and, and they've got already two more movies in the fucking in in, in the in, in the pipeline already because like they're gonna do a Madam Web. Yeah, that's the next one. You that's don't need a Madam Web if you don't have Spider Man. None of this makes any sense. None of this makes no. any it's sense. Such a strange... no. You need fucking Spider Man for all of it. You have these characters, so they need to justify it. 
And so somebody's got to get paid. Somebody, they got to do something with this money. Yeah. Not pay the writers or the, or the actors, but hey. Um, but, uh, wow. we So. Sorry, getting, I'm gonna, I'm getting, gonna getting off because I'm excited about watching yeah. that trailer and seeing a portrayal of Craven so, that yeah. I can really fucking get. Oh, we're talking about Batman. We're going right back now. to Batman, yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'll put a little pin in what you were talking about yeah. where it got, de- not derailed, but taken to. I had to get it off my chest. Um, the thought that the Wolverine, I keep, the Wolverine game by Insomniac, they have a great track record with, with these comic book uh, franchises. Uh, a, a, a listener, uh, a very loyal listener, and a, a friend of ours, uh, Mr. Steinberg, we were discussing this recently. And like, what, how, what game, what does this game even look like? Like, okay, it can't just be some walk around beat em up game. It won't be that. It could be, but it won't be. So we were talking, and we decided, because we're making the game, what if it was like God of War? Not like God of War, but that style, that heavy heavy grounded pop the claws just slash the shit out of people feel yeah it's got to feel brutal and aggressive for the sake of being brutal and aggressive because that's who the wolverine is it can't be an open world game not really because what's gonna go this fucking motorcycle and just ride around from city to city <laughs> it ain't gonna work that way right so it's not a zone world, just open canada open canada all, yeah. all, all canada's open i know <laughs> um i just i've been I don't know when this game's coming out. No one knows when this game's no, coming out. No, because they really haven't talked a lot about it. They're just it. heads down working on it. Yeah. And I'm hoping and praying that they put as much love and care into this game, who, for one of, just like Spider-Man, one of the most uh, uh, adored and popular comic book characters of all time. They could print money with a, several games with Wolverine. With a, a lo- Just give me a Wolverine game with it. He's just hunting Sabretooth. I'm good. Yeah. We're good. All's right with the world. They're, the character is so rich, and there's so much you can do with with him, and the other characters that don't often appear in in Marvel video game properties or you know um, movie properties. You know, you could have him going after like just trying to track down Sabretooth, and there's a fucking side mission where oh shit, there's Omega Red. Yeah. You know? The beauty of this character, too, man, this this episode, but the beauty of this character is this game could take place anywhere. It could take yeah. place in Japan. Absolutely. It could take I my idea was would be really cool. Miami? No. But that's also a good idea. <laughs> no. Um, but what if the game doesn't take place in one place? Like in terms of or one time period. It just follows him. The story is just him. Yeah. The vagabond, the the the, the wanderer. Patch, Logan, James, Weapon X, Weapon Plus. That's the story. Yeah. That's the game. And so the game is, you started as, you're in the, the academy, and Xavier's like, all right, Logan, we're going to sit down. We're going to try to break through some of these memories. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know, Chuck. You know, that whole thing. And he goes, just, just relax. Let us, we've been working on this. And the whole game, it's just, it's like Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Every, it's like, and it's broken up by, he comes out of it, Maybe goes to the danger room, goes walks around, talks to other characters, gets backstory, gets lore, and goes back to Charles, and they go to another mission. Another mission is feudal Japan. Another mission is 1800s Canada. Next mission is World War One. Next mission is and and CIA. Next mission yeah. is the Weapons Plus program, and, and then Alpha Flight, and then the Incredible Hulk, and then it's like you have this opportunity to do some really cool shit with this yeah. character in gaming. Yeah, there's so much depth there in terms of where you can go with it. And, and I fucking hope we get a fraction of that. I'm hoping. I mean, just Jones, I will buy your game, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think it'd be great. That'd be well, such fun. Because also you'd be having an X Men game without the X Men, mm-hmm. which which would be fantastic. Because so many, and I know you guys have them on your list. We'll talk about them. So many of the X Men games are always anthology games because part of the fun is playing as the different X Men. You know, yes. you don't just have a Cyclops game. You don't just have right. a Storm game or an well, Ice Man game. Most of those game characters can't. They just don't have the the weight and the depth to carry an entire game like Wolverine does. Yeah. Right, that's true. Um, but to backtrack, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Arkham City, Arkham Asylum. I guess I could put them together. Uh, I chose not to. Because I feel like, while I really enjoyed Arkham Asylum a lot, and it's a, it's, it blows my mind that the game is as good as it was, and it came out in 2009. 
Uh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, Asylum or Arkham City came out in 2011, um, and much like the first game, it really just like Jeff said, and I completely uh, agree. The game it's the first game. It's the first comic book game uh, that I ever played where I felt like I was that character. There's something about creeping along like on uh, you know, on the on the ceiling and like dropping down to snatch a uh, a thug from the shadows and, and his buddy's like oh where'd, Frank where'd you go oh, oh. he starts yeah. shooting off into the distance and like I know you're here bats I know yeah. you're here but that's so awesome yeah one thing I really like about you know that entire series of games and it, it we see it more often in games now than we did then was when before the game starts you have to adjust the brightness level. So that it's just dark enough. Yes. And like those particular games, like I just love playing in the dark. Like all the lights are out and you're just like, I'm going to enthrall. Yes. Like you're, you're part of it. Uh, it's just so well done. I so agree. well done. Well, and there's stuff that you do in the game too, in the Arkham games where, you know, <clears throat> it changes like the behavior of the characters later on. Like as you're, you know, taking out certain thugs and you're taking out certain like, you know, lower level people, you know, it impacts how the you know the the bad guys overall are going to act and i just think like that level of care that they put into the game to make it that complex because you know like we said with some of the games you know just super nintendo right but you know the 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 play dynamic is just we're going to punch and kick and Mm -hmm. and just beat our way through the the levels and in this maybe even more than i mean this is this is this is all the best aspects of batman and you're given the opportunity to explore all of it because you know in a movie you're not limited to you know well we have to have him be the detective or he has to be bruce wayne or he has to you know be you know that there's the character bruce wayne and then there's the real bruce Wayne, which is always the thing about christian bale's performance that i always thought was really great is that he really played all three of those characters i think better than than any other actor playing those characters have right you know i think michael keaton is the better batman i think um you know mm, i'm gonna you know fucking i'm gonna say it val kilmer i think plays a pretty good bruce wayne like as actual just bruce wayne um okay i will not shit on that movie as much as other people would want to no way i will for you. it's fine <laughs> i just i just you know i i like the performances the characters give even though a lot of the movie is really ridiculous um but you know christian bale you know when he's not bruce wayne he's not batman he's just that he's just who bruce wayne really is at that stage of life yeah. i think he figured that out and played that extremely well oh, amongst yeah. all of those um, but you get all of that in this game. You know, he's it's, this isn't just a brawler, but you have the brawling elements. It isn't yep. just, you know, you can be a detective. You can do all of these different things, and it's just so much fun. Mm. And a shout out to the just the basic. I mean, look, the stealth, the uh, the sneaking around is super satisfying. Super. Oh, it really satisfying. is. Yeah. But you know what? They nailed the combat. They did so much. It was so easy. Yeah. But like again, easy to pick up. Not necessarily difficult to master, but there's some depth to it. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you hit the those combos just right, and you get the bone breaks, oh, and the X ray vision, and God, like, yeah, oh, fuck. Just, I mean, literally, I mean, and, and oh, the detective, the detective vision, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I and I can't, and that's why one of the reasons why I can't put Spider Man at number one as and I goddamn that that game is so good. It is. I can't because the it's it's pulling the Batman com, like uh, uh, combat, but oh, not yeah. as well. Mm-mm. It still gets janky sometimes. It gets weird sometimes. It's not. This is not an indictment on the game, but Batman, Arkham City, Arkham Asylum. I didn't play the third one because I heard it wasn't good, as good. Uh, but they nailed about everything. Pretty the tone, the general ambiance, the characters, the story, the the grit, the combat, the, the sound, the score. Everything worked together. And the was, fu- that fucking version of the Joker, so it's good. like yeah, it's like straight out of the comics. Like, it's so good, it's so good. Yeah. Well, again, I give um, all all props to Mark Hamill. You know, it's so funny to think that probably the single most iconic hero in pop culture is also maybe the single greatest portrayal of that character. You know, because, you know, you, you see these things online where it's like, oh, Cesar Romero was the comedian 
and yeah. um, Jack Nicholson was the mobster, and Heath Ledger was the anarchist, and uh, Jared Leto was a psychopath, but Mark Hamill was the Joker. Yeah, and I feel that I do. Yeah, well I mean, said. I agree with well that. said. Um, uh, so, fun fact. Uh, well, I have a question for you guys. Better yet. So I did some research before this episode uh, a while back, and I was just looking at all the different uh, comics-inspired video games. And there's a lot of them, man. God damn, yes, I didn't realize there there's so are, many. man. So uh, uh, my question to you is, um, out of all of them, uh, which ones, like, you know, you got your Batmans, you, you got Captain America, you got some Avenger games, you got all sorts of games, right? Uh but there are some games, some properties, some that don't have like a specific letter that it starts with, right? But there's like hundreds of these games. Do you know what those letters are? Think about it for a second. If you could pick, let's say there's three, three letters that don't have a video game attached to it, that like it starts with, there's no character, nothing. What three letters would they be? I have no idea. Ants might surprise you. Does it spell Mac? <laughs> no. Hmm. Well, worth a shot. <laughs> so, uh, V. There is no combo game at all that starts with the letter V. Which hmm. I thought was odd. You think there would be V? Nothing. Did they? They never did a V for Vendetta game or anything. It's a graphic novel. I, don't I think know, so. but I mean, after the movie and, and stuff. I don't know I don't if they know. did actually. I have some thing in my mind that maybe thinks maybe they did, but probably yeah. not. Q, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. but you know the one that fucked me up? N. You'd think there would be. There's no N. There's. Give me a superhero that begins with N. <laughs> Nightwing. North Star, motherfucker. That's all I got. <laughs> Nightwing. You don't have a video game. Oh, well, we got no. Gotham Knights. So he's that's the there. first time he's like really shown up. That's one of the games I'm thinking about getting for PS5 before Spider-Man comes out. Mm-hmm. I hope that game sucks. <laughs> it's like the, okay, maybe don't not. waste your time. It's like the Avengers game. It was it's not, not good. good. Oh, fuck. Not good. You know what? I wanted to, I'm happy you mentioned that because I feel like we should mention how much of a catastrophic failure that okay. game was. You know, that's funny. I um, I feel uniquely qualified to talk about this game. Uh, it was on Game Pass for a hot minute. So I was like, oh, fuck. I'll just download it fucking instant regret uh <laughs> i probably put solid two hours in trying to get behind what this was yeah it didn't know what it wanted to be but it really wanted to be destiny it did and there was only one it wasn't yeah and and you know the itemization was not good the leveling was not good loot there's no need for loot there's no need for loot they have armor that's yeah, all they you're have fucking avengers uh and, and a god none of them look like adventure none of them look like avengers that's true well, i think Hulk looked pretty good. That was the only one. And Iron Man looked fine. Because he had a fucking suit well, you on. you said they didn't look like her. He doesn't look like Tony Stark when he has the th- fucking thing off. Go, he, yeah, he did. No. Yeah. Thor like didn't look goatee. like Thor. Captain looked like Cap either. Listen, Cap looked like a vacuum salesman who just stumbled upon the shield. Compared to Chris Evans or Any an artist them. rendition of, because I've seen a few different... I'm just saying. No. That I think that Tony Stark was pretty close. Agree to disagree on that one. Characters look like shit. Um... But I mean, I felt like graphically the game was fine. It was everything else. It was it was combat on rails. There was no end game, and in a game that's supposed to be a live service game, you need end game things for people to do. And people quickly realized there ain't shit. Nope. It suffered the same yeah. fate as Anthem, just not as bad. It's, you know, suffered the same fate as Outriders, not not quite as bad. And actually, they just, uh, servers not servers was it? no the, the the game just stopped support earlier. They this just year. stopped yeah, supporting recently. this year, yeah. Which is impressive that it lasted this long. They just didn't get a lot of content, unfortunately. They had a couple of heroes like Black Panther. Uh, Hawkeye, Hawkeye shows Hawkeye, up. Ha- the ha- was another character? Um, the other archer? Kate Bishop. There you go. Yeah, Kate yeah. Bishop. Uh, there might have been another one. Uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah. But uh, none of that mattered because uh, Spider-Man was on PlayStation. It was. Which, fuck that shit. Um, and they wanted to make that all like some interwoven world, I think, when they started producing these and then realized, oh, wait, they have to be good. Speaking of Spider-Man, how many? Do you know how many Spider-Man video games there are? I own most of them, so yes. You sure? There's a lot of them. Oh, shit. 
Take a wild guess. If you own this many, I will shake your fucking hand right now. I'm going to say 17. 37, David. Holy Shit. fuck. You ain't close. All right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Spider-Man versus Kingpin. I've got uh, Maximum Carnage. I've got Separation Anxiety, the, the sequel. Oh, I know Separation Anxiety. I've got Spider-Man, X-Men, Arcade's Revenge. I have... Um, is this game also featuring Spider-Man or just like with... Both. Sp- okay. But, but they're all like Spider-Man games. Yeah. Um, I got Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 from the movies. Um, I've got uh, Spider-Man Friend or Foe. I have Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. I've got Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1, 2, and 3. I don't know if those count. I mean, he's on. He's in there. Yeah. But I think these are... I think the list was like Spider... Like, Spider-Man and da da da. Okay. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man. It's about 12. Yeah. I counted. I'm like, I didn't realize. I had no idea. That's fucking wild. That's crazy. Because, like, there, there are... Because I think there's, like, Nintendo Spider-Man games. I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. That shit goes way back. Yeah. yeah. It's only a couple worth talking about. That's true. Not 37. No. No, but, I was, you know, there are, in fact, 23 X-Men games. Did not realize there were that many. Uh, fun fact, though, there are 16 Garfield video games. Garfield. <laughs> you fucking hurt me. How did that come up in your search? I did research. I looked no, at the I mean, list. Like, I looked at the list. They, there's a whole website of just there's lists? There's a fucking of, list. Oh, shit. You can find anything on the internet. <laughs> I mean, and I, I, was found, like, I found the title to every softcore porn yeah, if yeah. You found that, show on, 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 on yeah. Max After Dark, yeah. so. There are 24 Ninja Turtle games. That sounds about right. There are 39 Batman games. That does not feel right. That's 30 fucking a lot. nine. I don't know that I've played more than five of them. <laughs> but there's a really bad one on Super Nintendo. There's a few that aren't so great. And there is a bad one that was on Nintendo, too. If there's those ones correctly. that, there was the animated series ones that weren't very good. No. I remember those. They looked so good in the Game Pro. Yeah. <laughs> they did not play <laughs> they so good. Did, they, they did not, not translate well They did not translate well afterwards. Yeah. No. Did you know there were two Blade games? I do now. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how the fuck? And they came out in 2000 and 2002. On PlayStation and PlayStation 2. That sounds about right. Like, they would be PlayStation releases. Uh, did you know that there was an Andy Cap video game? 1987 on the Commodore 64. Does Andy Cap know there's an Andy Cap video game? <laughs> How do you think he's still in business? Residuals. I hope so. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the oldest video games, uh, uh, comic video games I could find, was the Superman game on the Atari 2600 in 1978. Hmm. 1978. That's fucking old. That was right after the So movie. that should tell you something right there. Well, if there's 39 Batman games, we might be going back to our ta- the Atari days. The earliest one I know is is from the is Batman 89. It's from the movie. Yeah. From, that's the from early the one, the earliest one I know of. You mean the Nintendo. one on Nintendo? Yeah, yeah, the one on Nintendo. Yeah. That's the earliest one I know. If there's one before that, there could be. I don't know of it. But like that's the earliest one that I'm I actually have a memory of playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Do either of you have that on your list? No. There's a fucking reason why. <laughs> well, what else do you have on your list, Jones? Oh, well, good question. <laughs> um, since we, we've covered, like, two of them already, then my number one and number two, respectively. Uh, so, uh, my number five uh, should not come to end a surprise to anybody who knows me personally. It's the X-Men game from 1993 on Sega Genesis. Uh, and it's, again, not, and I've talked about this game before, it's not because it's amazing. It's because it was the best one at the time. Uh, it did a lot of things poorly. Did a lot of things pretty damn good, though. I mean, it's one of the first games I remember there being an actual secret in the game. Where, like, I can't remember what you had to do. Like, there's, like, a level you can get to, and then you do something in Magneto's, like, on Asteroid M, and, like, you could reset the game, and it brought you to, like, a new menu. Does that sound familiar to you guys? I remember, like, reading that in a, in a game where nope. it actually fucking worked. No, it never came up. Because remember, the game begins, you're in the danger room. Yeah. There's, like, a like a like like an extra little panel, or there's something you could hit, and it, like, changed how the game played a little bit. I gotta look it up again, but it's an actual fucking thing. Um, but for my money, it's on my list because it's an emotional attachment. Because it's Wolverine, man. Who, no, and, and I didn't even fucking use him. Because it I pissed me off. <laughs> Look, you know the funny thing, and this, and this is Insomniac. I know you're not listening, but if somebody is attached to Insomniac is listening, listen fucking closely. If Wolverine pops his fucking claws... 
Well, although his mutation is to have the claws, yes. That's not his mutant, true mutant ability. It's his fucking healing factor. It's his heightened senses, you motherfucks. Uh, the people who made this game felt that Wolverine didn't need to have a healing factor. He was just a punk-ass bitch who got mauled by everybody. He did. And he popped his claws and, like, damaged him or some stupid shit. Well, I hated that with a passion. You had, in that game, Wolverine, Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cyclops. Yep. Gambit. Gambit. And... I'm missing somebody. I know. I'm trying to remember who the other one is. Well, because Storm, Jean Grey, Archangel, and Rogue would help you. They were helpers. Yes. Right. But Wolverine, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Gambit, and that actually might be it. It might have been. <laughs> actually. Uh, but the one, I use Cyclops a lot. And you know what? Cyclops does not get a lot of appreciation in the, in, in the, in the pop cultural world. But Cyclops, Scott Summers, Slim, Psych, whatever you want to fucking call him, actually is an incredibly complicated fucking character uh, who's e- arguably more interesting than Wolverine, technically. Uh, but that's a conversation for another time when we're actually talking True. about the X-Men long form, which we will do one day. Oh, sure. But for my money, Cyclops is a far more interesting character. Not my favorite, but he's a far more interesting character. Who has yeah, a... there's the only four. Okay, yeah. yeah. But, like, he was a better character. You know, uh, I beat that game maybe once because it's fucking tough. And I will tell you the level I struggled the most with. It's the, the level where you're on the fucking ship, you have to dodge the fucking asteroids, and you're fighting Deathbird. I think it was Deathbird. Uh, fuck that level. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever played that game very much. Did you guys play that game very much? <laughs> no, no. Really? Neither of you? Um, ever played de- it all? Yes, I definitely played it, but I don't remember that. Not, I you don't remember re- that level. I don't remember that. I don't fuck. remember that level. It was the it, it was Deathbird and Deathbird's uh, part of the Shi'ar Empire. Yeah, and it's like when you're going to space, you're on the ship, and you you're literally on top of the ship, and there's like you're fighting her. It's a boss fight, but there's asteroids flying at you at the same goddamn time. You have to <laughs> jump over them. The shit wasn't fun. Put it that way. Yeah. Um, but the game was great for what it was. I thought they put a lot of effort into it. Um, but uh, my number four is Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, which fun. Fun fact, I, I learned years ago that it was a comic book, uh, which is why I made the list, because otherwise it would not, like, I don't think most people know that Turok is a comic book character yeah. from, like, the fucking, like, 50s. Um, but when it came out uh, on the Nintendo 64, uh, I definitely did not know. It just was this badass dinosaur hunter. Yeah, yeah, and it, uh, if you go back to our Nintendo 64 episode in the archives, that was my sleeper hit, Turok. Mm-hmm. A great fucking game. Yeah, it's violent. Uh, it had uh, cheat codes. You can like make the like, it's, uh, the was a slow mo mode was fantastic. The little um, strobe light disco mode was it probably giving kids seizures all over the place. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I recently uh, just got Turok actually from um, inherited it from Steph's brother. Oh yeah, mom, yeah. Her mom was or Steph's mom was getting rid of stuff in the house, and she's like, "Do you want this uh, Nintendo sixty four in games?" And I'm like. Yes. And I will uh, take all of those. Yeah, it had Turok in it. I know when Noah listens to this, that'll this will get his uh get his get his chub a little bit chubby. Um but uh Star Wars Pod Racer was in there. Uh as well as some classic games too. So nice. Yeah. But yeah, I um I'm a big fan of Turok. I had a really I mean I it's one of those early games in my like gaming life where I, I sunk a lot of time. Yeah, me and my brothers would spend a lot of time playing Turok. Because it was it was, was it great. was not technically, but it was kind of like a sandbox game. It was it was almost a sandbox game, but not really. But it kind of yeah. was. Yeah. Because the, the levels were very large, well, for the time. And it was just like, when you start inputting these cheat codes and just fucking around and dicking around and having so much time with it, so much so much fun with it, um, you could easily spend like three hours just not actually doing anything. Yeah. Um, my number three, uh, which is my top three here. Uh, obviously, number one is Batman, uh, then Spider-Man. It is X Men Origins Wolverine on the Xbox 360. Ooh. Uh, the un- the un- was it the uncaged version, the un- uncaged edition, or whatever the fuck it was called. So, this is the greatest Wolverine uh, game ever made. Currently, Insomniac, um, you have big shoes to fucking fill. Uh, so, there was a Wolverine game that came before that, um, and I, <laughs> it wasn't very good. I remember uh, tricking the Midnight Listener into buying it. 
And he was so pissed at me. Because the game wasn't good. <laughs> He's still mad at you about He's it. Actually, he actually... He's like, don't fucking up. bring that up for... Come um, on. But the X-Men Origins game. Well, although the movie wasn't great. The game. Have you guys played this game? I mm-hmm. don't know that I have. Well, Jeff fucking knows. This shit was violent. It's intense. It's Is it? fucking yeah. violent. And I don't mean like, oh, Wolverine pops calls and slashes a guy. Yo, he's cutting in the motherfuckers. <laughs> The best part about the game, it is the very first time in any video game that I can remember that I've ever played where Wolverine, you see his healing factor work. He get like torn to shreds. His guts are open and hanging out. And he just slowly heals it back. Oh, that's you see his cool. adamantium skeleton underneath. Like it was for wow. a fucking, what was it, 2009 Xbox 360 game. It was, surpri- it was I'm pretty sure it was at, uh, rated M. Okay. It had to have been. Yeah. The story, the shits. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no. But you didn't play it that was game. The, for it the was the joy of just fucking some shit up as Wolverine. It was, yeah. it was yeah. such a. I don't know if it was a risk. I don't know how much money this game made. I should look that up. I don't even fucking care. Uh, but I remember like being so nonplussed with the fucking story, but being so engaged with the violence of Wolverine. It's the first and only game where you got to be the the berserker. You got to be the old knucklehead. You got to be. That guy, yeah. the best of what he does, and what he does isn't very fucking nice. You got to be that guy. Uh, it probably should be my number one, honestly, as much as I enjoyed it, um, because those top three games are the ones where you got to feel like you were the character you were playing. Yeah, it's true, and that's the most important part. Yeah, it's the part story, of the experience. The story can suck, uh, but if you feel like you're the character, if you you really feel like you're you're popping the claws and you're diving in headfirst into the enemies and tearing them to shreds. Fuck it, it's all worth it. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, another reason I really like this game is because you could unlock costumes, right? You could unlock costumes with this game, which was fucking fantastic. Because Wolverine has a lot of really cool, iconic costumes. The brown and uh, yellow, the, the the blue and yellow, the patch costume, the X-Force costume. So, Jones, yes, you mentioned it. X-Force? So gonna, uh, no, patch? no, no, the costumes. Oh, okay. You've seen, I know you've seen the photo. What do you feel about? How do you feel about it? Seeing Wolverine, seeing Hugh Jackman in the in the yellow and blue. I'm 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 here for it. Yeah. I think uh, Deadpool one and two is great. Uh, I feel like Deadpool's probably just gonna kill the uh, the the Fox universe. I've heard some things about this movie. Uh, I've heard a lot of different rumors about it. Um, I'm fucking I'm I'm here for all of it. Even if like three of the things I've heard are true about the movie, it's gonna be unfucking believable. Yeah. They're gonna yeah, really I can't wait for that. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna go all out for this. And it's and, and you know, I'm glad that Disney's letting them give them hopefully give them the breathing room to do do it big. So those those first I mean so the original Deadpool I'm I'm okay with the original Deadpool movie. Yeah. The reason why I'm okay with it is that I feel like they made the movie when they made it, but it was the script that was written 10 years ago. And they didn't quite update the script enough. Because there's some dated jokes. Yeah. Oh, less attractive Rosie O'Donnell. Like, Rosie O'Donnell has been relevant since, like, the fucking Bronze Age. And they're bringing her up in a Deadpool movie, right? So you get the Deadpool 2, and it's just all fucking current, like, pop culture superhero references, you know? Um... So I, I, this movie has earned whatever it needs to have yeah. to be what it's supposed to be. That you know, if you're if you're especially lately, Marvel, right? Marvel, listen, Kevin, Kevin Feige, I know you're listening, all right. Kevin, just let Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool be Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool. Don't don't try to marvel anything about it. Just let it be what it is. Let it be what it needs to be. Um. Every movie doesn't have to follow the same formula. Every TV show doesn't have to suck. Just let this one work. All right? Thank you. That's all. Thanks for coming to Dave's TED Talk. Yeah. It's my TED Talk. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not that any of that's your fault, Kevin, but, you know, let's you, just yeah. call it what it is. Yeah. The, the, your name's on there. Phase four and five haven't been great. There's been some greatness, but, you know, the sum of the parts, lukewarm about it. You don't need to make this seven, eight, and nine, Kevin. Okay. You know what he's talking about. I said yeah. it. Yeah. And everybody listening to this podcast <laughs> better fucking know what I'm talking about when I say seven, eight, and nine. 
Yeah, we tune that shit out. All right, anyways. Back, yeah, to, yeah, back to the Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's my number three. All right. Jeff. Solid choice. What do you got? Yeah, most of my shit's been talked about. <laughs> uh, no, I know. And I just want to... I know there's one I, on there. I do have a, a couple things I want to mention. Uh, one is sort of an honorable mention. Not necessarily a great game, but a great concept. And that was Disney Infinity uh, Marvel <sighs> Superheroes. Now, Disney can't... Or... Disney came up with this idea that, hey, we could sell games, but we could also sell toys. And these were back in our TRU days, and I collected toys, and I collected video games. So, I mean, it's a, it's a win-win. Uh, so the first iteration was all Disney characters, uh, and then they brought in uh, Disney Infinity 2.0, which was the Marvel superheroes. We had the Avengers. We had uh, the Guardians. Uh, and it was, it, was the, it was the first, like, real sort of sandbox type game um and you know me and dave worked together at tru back in the day and at one point there was like an entire aisle dedicated to disney infinity figures and skylander figures it wasn't an entire aisle like that was one of the first things when i went back to toys r us i had to learn about this shit because i had not i did not i did not know what (laughs) skylanders were i did not know about disney infinity and there was a third one too that was a part of the Toys to Life thing. Yeah. I can't um, remember what it was. I'm trying to remember what it is, too. I, I Obviously, I didn't pick up on that one. but Yeah, but the, the concept is very similar to what Nintendo does with Amiibo figures. Now, it's, you know, Toys to Life, basically. Uh, this was the first Marvel game that came after Disney purchased Marvel. Uh, and they, they had three main stories. So, like, you could buy the figures, and then you could buy games or levels, essentially, to have a story to go with the characters or you could just play in an open sandbox very much how like uh roblox works yep. today before roblox was around um a big part of it you know for me was collecting all the figures yep i got spider-man figures i got star wars figures we got all the guardians we got most of the avengers we have multiple versions of captain america one with his helmet off one with his helmet on when i'm just holding a shield because yeah. it's a combat level yeah 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 it was it was just a really cool concept uh, I think when Toys R Us closed, half of the electronics department was still left over Disney Infinity figures because that shit fucking faded fast. So mm. before before they announced the bankruptcy and everything, um, working th- was was the first Thanksgiving I've ever worked. Um, you know because we were op- we were open at five o'clock and you know they staggered the sales. So from like. 12 to 2 or 12 to 3 the infinity stuff was like buy one get two free or something and i had not purchased any of the infinity stuff at that point and i worked from five until like three in the morning and then like went back at eight o'clock the next day because that's just what we did yeah um I walked out of that store. I spent $135 on Disney Infinity, and I had four gigantic fucking bags. I bought everything. <laughs> the only one I could not get that we that we didn't have enough of, and I still can't find this one, is Ant-Man. That's like the one character I wasn't able to get, but I got everything else. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was just fun to yeah. collect them, and it is a fucking money pit, Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just collecting dust somewhere downstairs in the bar, but uh, it, it was... It was a unique concept, and I mean, they made a shit ton of money on the front end, but I think what they lost in production cost on the tail end, it yeah. made it not really much of a lucrative effort for them. But it, it was a cool concept nonetheless. And we got Star Wars as Disney Infinity 3.0, which yeah. was uh, pretty awesome. Uh, in terms of my top five, uh, we talked about Turtles in Time already. Uh, we talked about Spider-Man Maximum Carnage already. We talked about my number one, which is Arkham City. Uh, so the other two that I have left on my list uh, are both X-Men or X-Men related games. You're a smart man. Uh, X-Men Arcade, uh, released by Konami in 1992. <sighs> that game frustrated the fuck out of me, man. <laughs> it was so much fun. And if you look at all the arcade games that were out then, uh, Turtles, uh, X-Men, Oh, no, I Simpsons. misunderstood you. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I thought you were talking about like Spider-Man, X-Men, Arcade's Revenge. No. Like the actual no, 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 console no. game. No. Okay, no, you're talking about the arcade. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, it was all, they were all very similar in terms yeah. of you're either, there's either four or six characters and you're just, you know, side scrolling, basically. Uh, this was one of the first cabinets that had six figures or six characters. So you could 
pick between Cyclops, Colossus, Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Dazzler. Why? Why that was the number six? I don't really There's know. So I only played people. a Cyclops like Dazzler, and Nightcrawler a most of the time. Character for a while, <laughs> she was. Yeah. It's like why do we keep trying to make Dazzler happen. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, basic three button strategy: jump, attack, mutant powers. Yeah. Uh, and it was this, those six X Men had to team up to fight Magneto and his his team of cronies while he's trying to take over the world. So many quarters dumped into that fucking cabinet. It had to have been. Uh, that's the that's the last cabinet for me, Jeff. That's of, of the of the three that I'm getting. Yeah, that's the one that has not been on sale yet. Has not yeah. gone down in price. So I'm it's waiting. A, it's a fucking good one. Patiently waiting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you're at Pittsburgh Gaming Expo or some, you know, arcade, and you see that game, just fucking play it. Play Do it. yourself a favor and fucking play it. I think they have it at uh, Pins Mechanical in Southside. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, my number two on my list, so that was number four. Uh, number three was Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. Number two, uh, our first Dreamcast mention here. Uh, I know where this is going. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There it is. New Age of Heroes. There it is. Uh, released in 2000 for the Dreamcast. It came out on PlayStation Xbox a few years later. Um, but all around, what a fucking good fighting game. Mm-hmm. It was the first game that really had like 2D fighters in like a 3D fighting environment. It introduced three-on-three uh, combat it introduced you know the tag in effect that they had there were 56 playable characters Shit. Uh, all the avengers all the x-men everyone from street fighter all the mega man characters like the world is your oyster if you fucking love marvel like anybody you want to play have as is in that fucking game. I'm not, uh, and I've always been a big fan of Street Fighter, but for, uh, like periphery, like I've never been like knee deep because that's yeah. a whole culture. That's oh, a, Street that's Fighter a, is a whole thing. It is a whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And I've never gotten into that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, and I'm sure somebody who's listening, uh, probably the Midnight Listener, could probably correct me on this. I've always been under the assumption, at least, uh, that the. Uh, Marvel versus Street Fighter, X Men versus Street Fighter, Marvel versus Capcom series helped reinvigorate, like, the whole of the Capcom. Yeah, I, games. I think it definitely did because yeah. there was a period when we were little and like you know your Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter games were a big deal. Like everybody played Street Fighter games, you know, uh, Street Fighter Two Turbo or whatever. You know, everybody had new. If you didn't have one, you knew somebody who did. On your list, Jones, that they list for uh, seventy six versions of Street Fighter Two. Well. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many there are, but I'm sure there's probably close to that. Yeah. Um, but when those games came out, it changed things. But well, I, I think part of it, if you look at pop culture at that time, the late 90s, there was sort of this resurgence of comic books. Like mm-hmm. it was cool to like comic books. Uh, really, for the first time, you know, more movies were getting made. It was more in the mainstream media. And as you start to tie properties together, it brings in a whole new audience. And, you know, there's no question that it didn't help reinvigorate all of it. Because you can go to, like, you know, any arcade back then when we were young and, like, there were a huddle of people around that the, the Capcom, yeah. uh, X-Men, uh, the Cabin, like, just going at it, like, put your quarters down. I, I got next. Yeah. yeah. Like, you get, get your ass handed to you. It didn't fucking matter. You know? Yeah. Uh, those, those, were, those were great games. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we, I spent a lot of time, my college roommate, uh, when I started college, it was like two days after the Dreamcast had come out. Um, and so we spent a lot of time playing Soul Calibur and Fuck. R versus Capcom. And, Give me Voldo you know, any day of the week, yeah. brother. Uh, but it's so fun. That, the real ones know yeah, about and Voldo. Lo- and looking back, like at the time, I'm like, there's there are zero flaws in this game. Like, it's just a fun-ass fighting game. And looking back now, like, Dreamcast had online gaming capability, mm-hmm. but like this game did not. And it's like, well, you, you probably could have. That would have helped things. Who was little. your Who was your guy in Soul Calibur? In Soul Calibur, because mm-hmm. I, I I it split between two for me. It was Baldo because he's so fucking unorthodox, and Mitsurugi. Mitsurugi. I like Mitsurugi and I like uh, Nightmare. Nightmare's badass. Yeah. Those are yeah. great fucking characters. Yeah. Great fucking game. That game's so fucking I own good. that motherfucker. One of these I... days, we're going to talk about Soul Calibur, or we're going to come over here and get drunk and play some Soul Calibur I downstairs. Will I'm play down Soul for Calibur that. Yeah, any day of the week. Let's do that. And be really bad at it, because yeah. I was at one point passable. 
<laughs> at one point, I wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, th- I think we all are pretty fucking rusty and at this Reed point. And <laughs> and fucking all those just unique, interesting characters. And yeah. the graphics were fantastic. Oh, and yeah. st- I, those graphics still that hold up. That shit holds up. Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah. So those are my uh, extra two. Like I said, number one for me was Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I sort of lumped those two together. Um, and we can talk ad nauseum about fucking Batman, but those games are so good. Yeah. You know what else is uh, so good? This goddamn podcast. This was a lot. This was, was pretty a fun. Good. This was a fun episode. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. Dave, um, did, Dave, fucking got the assignment today. I I came ready to play. Boys, <laughs> we, we changed places. I where I wrote like the name of the game and then nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I had a great time. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, Jeff, can you tell us what we're gonna be? Oh wait, fuck. We don't really have anything. We're still working on that. Everybody, we'll come up with something. Uh, We're probably going to put very minimal effort into it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, we got we got a whole list of (laughs) subjects to choose from. But life's been kind of, as you know, as we haven't recorded, we haven't put up any episodes lately, so we're kind of trying to play catch up. So we're gonna we're gonna put our heads together and come up with something good to to give you guys. I want you guys to know that I put so much effort into this episode. Don't even fucking think I'm going to put that kind of episode (laughs) into the next one. (laughs) That's fair. Yeah, we'll take that. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we appreciate everybody tuning in this week. Uh, glad to have everybody back. Uh, and we're excited to bring some more amazing podcast content to your fucking ear holes. So thanks for joining us. Take care of yourselves. And we will see you all next week. Belly button grinding. Nothing good. Nothing good about that. Yeah. <laughs>